Young Miami, your loud ass is not going to be exempt. Young Miami, put it like this. We ain't, we ain't trying to get you to stand accountable or jump into Diddy Affairs. But all we ask of you, young Miami, could you at least come out to help your, your, your man's case? At least say that him and all you is consensual? That's all we want. Just, that's all we want. We know you love the P. It's all good. But at least come on and be like, no, I'm with that shit. I, I like it. I, I'm down for it. He ain't forcing me. At least come out and say that. Because now we about to look at you like blink twice if you getting shit on and you don't like it. That's all we need her to do. Be like, oh, yeah. All that shit I was talking on, Carisha, please. Getting pissed on. Golden showers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Me being one of the 20 side chicks. Oh, yeah. I'm, I like that shit. He ain't forcing me. I love it. I signed up willingly. We'll leave you alone. Like, All right, good. God bless you. Cool. The free cops? Of course. Oh, you got it. Young Miami, we just need you to send us a smoke signal that the urine you're collecting is by consent. That's it. We don't give a fuck what type of kick you shit y'all into. Just say you like the you like the piss. And there is nobody forcing you to say it because we don't want you come out later saying that, oh, you was like Cassie too. That's all we're trying to say. I right, playboy. She been quiet as a motherfucker. <laughs> Yo, this been the first week you ain't hear, you ain't hear Carisha talking about how she loves sucking. These bitches show up when you don't need them. When you need them, <laughs> they're lesbian. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> It'd be like the perfect time for you to be with Diddy saying, mine, like, come on, come on. <sighs> Don't worry. Sean, I got you. I ain't, listen, Sean, I'm going to vet these joints for you, man. Because if they switching up their, they, they switching up their ideas or, you know, their opinions on you, it's tough. Now, we do got to used to be liquor. Right, um, before before like a decade ago, he was making money on Sean John and shit like that. When you know everybody had like a clothing brand, but within the last ten years or so, it's definitely been liquor, Ciroc, and also he has a joint venture partnership with De Leon. Now this is through a bigger company called Diageo, and all of that stuff kind of started unfolding before this recent like sexual domestic abuse allegations came out where that company stopped, kind of stopped working with him because he feels like, and, and, and just to explain in nigga terms, he wants De Leon to be Casamigos, right? So he's like, yo, if y'all put the same amount of money behind De Leon, like y'all put behind y'all other tequila brands, it'll go big. Like, I'm the best promoter in the world. That's Diddy saying it, right? Basically, he also accused him of racism. And basically, um, Diageo says, damn, you're not going to bite the hand that feeds you. You didn't do a motherfucking thing other than run around and gyrate with this Ciroc shit, and we gave you a billion dollars in your pocket. If you being greedy, we'll cut you out the pie completely. So they're trying to get rid of Diddy, right? So that's Diddy's biggest money earner they're trying to take away from him, right? Now, after that, the other things that, you know, at least publicly we know that makes him a lot of money, from what I've been told, Revolt is not a profitable venture at this point a lot of tv companies or tv stations especially on linear takes a while or sometimes you have to see the bigger picture um you know also there's a possible play that he could sell it you know what i mean so from what i hear revolt isn't profitable right just overall right does it bring in millions of dollars of course right because it's a tv station that sells ads is it profitable from what i've heard not yet so Diddy's been losing money on Revolt, but I hear, and and this is what this is what I hear from the industry insiders. Revolt is a passion project from Diddy, like you know, Diddy. Uh, which ironically, you're gonna hear me read, you're gonna hear me read um, a statement from Revolt. Actually, I'll just go to Revolt. <laughs> um. Ooh. And Revolt basically said that yeah, Diddy stepping down as chairman, but he hasn't been involved in day-to-day -day business uh, being conducted at Revolt, which I'm going to be honest with you, 
maybe I'm just misinformed, but as late as like last year, Diddy was making personal phone calls to have people either get shows on his channel or do content on his channel. So, yes, maybe he wasn't involved in day-to-day -day operation, but Diddy was using his real estate in terms of his magnitude of celebrity and also goodwill to try to convince people to fuck with Revolt. Now, he's basically kind of iced out, and, and obviously, you know, it's still his company, but it's to protect the company, okay? Now, uh, let me just read the statement that was put out by Revolt. They didn't put it on the website or anything like that. They uh, literally just went to Instagram and they said, Sean Combs has stepped down from his position as chairman of Revolt. While Mr. Combs has, pre has previously had no operational or day-to-day -day role in the business, this decision helps to ensure that Revolt remains steadfastly focused on our mission to create meaningful content for the culture and amplify the voices of all black people throughout the country and its African diaspora. Uh, they then say our focus has always been one that reflects our commitment to the collective journey of revolt, one that is not driven by any individual, but by the shared efforts and values of our entire team in behalf of advancing, elevating, and championing our culture, and that continues. Now, uh, TMZ kind of got a little bit of details of it because, you know, obviously if he's a chairman, there's a board, which by the way, kind of made sense, right? Like, the guy who owns the company, usually the chairman, usually kind of has the almost final say or could nudge the board either way. Even though a board is usually supposed to rule in on behalf, theoretically, if it's a public company, on behalf of, you know, shareholders. But in, in this sense, you know, the board is probably just still report to Diddy. So if Diddy runs the board, they report to him. He still owns the company. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure he could still fire whoever else is the, the chairperson who's going to step up, but it is what it is. Anyway, uh, here it goes. So the, so the, the CEO is Detavio uh, Samuels and the chief brand officer is Dion Graham, okay? Um, Diddy has just kind of stepped aside and he's doing it for clear reasons you could imagine. Now is the time, if they haven't locked in already, to set up what... 2024 is going to look like on an advertised realm. People are locking in what their budgets are. They know what their budgets will, for example, say AT&T, Sprint, McDonald's, all these huge companies. They're knowing what they want to spend to advertise their companies. They're going to want to know, okay, we're going to use this amount to go to urban, blah, 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 blah. Okay. We, all right. We're in urban. Where, where do we want to um, advertise that? Some might want to go to BT. Some might want to go to Revolt. These are millions of dollars, right? Now, when Diddy is the face of the brand, and now you you think his, fa his fate and his future is in limbo, will you commit all that money to him given that you don't know if this is going to turn left and maybe people start looking at you to say, hey, you're a weirdo for your company spending ad dollars with someone who, you know what I mean? Again, if we're going by the tail of the tape, and again, these are all allegations, the tail of the tape literally says that Diddy has been utilizing and abusing his power and his money to abuse people. So people who are continually giving him money, or at least giving a company that he's the face of, right, quote, unquote, the face of, money, it's kind of like, you know, they're probably going to take a second chance to think about it, right? So he's taking himself off the day-to-day -day or, or off of the, the board, which I think, I'm not too sure if it's going to save Revolt from potential losses in advertising spending, but at least they could separate themselves, even though, again, it's still his company, but they could separate them, themselves from him saying, hey, listen, we're a, you know, sovereign company that yes, it's owned by him, but we're operating on good faith for the culture and whatever he got going on ain't got nothing to do with us. Which, by the way, behooves Diddy. So it's kind of like convoluted, but it's a necessary move if you ask me, he had to do. He had to do, right? Now, the trolling didn't stop from, from 50 because 50 has been trolling nonstop. And, and I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I don't know what the fuck Diddy did to 
uh, 50 Cent. But this nigga been trolling for two weeks. There's not one video that has came out about Diddy that 50 hasn't posted. Actually, 50's posted more videos about Diddy than me. And nigga, I got a news page. You get what I mean? Uh, his latest post was about him taking a... a t and by the way, the, the leave is, is, is being called temporary. So it's almost assumed that after, you know, all this uh, passes, he'll return back to the helm of Revolt TV. 50 posts the, uh, a screenshot of the headline. Basically said, yo, I'll buy that from you, Playboy, for the low. Because you know Cadillac and AT&T going to pull out. I'm going to give you a few dollars for it now. Sell it to me. Then we can be friends. I'm serious. Call my phone. I'm telling y'all, man. This thing of 50 ain't shit. Now, I know some of y'all keep saying... He dated 50, 50 cents baby moms. But I thought, like, you know, if we're going back to their entire beef, bro, they've been beefing longer than Diddy. Like, uh, it was like four or five years ago, right? Four, like three, four, five years ago when I found out that he was dating um, 50's baby moms. 50 been hating this nigga over a decade. Literally over a decade. You get what I mean? Now, that wasn't the only post he did. He reposted this, uh, 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 you know, we, we, we showed you guys this too, but, um, this is Diddy posting a video of Cassie balled up in a blanket. By the way, we don't even know if maybe she was sick that day, you know, maybe she got the flu. She's just like, you know, she was kind of in bed or whatever, but she's kind of balled up in, 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 in the sheets, obviously now in using the context of what's going on now, people are thinking he beat her ass, but this is what he said. What you want my, what, what you got to say now, what you got to say now? You ain't got shit to say when you put your girl on the snap. Baby, your baby. I mean, shit getting weird. Come on, baby. It's hot outside. You fucking wrapped up in that blanket. Let's go jog on the beach. Yes. Okay. I don't know. Anyway, 50 says, damn, why would he put this shit out? <laughs> you know what I mean? 50 is, 50 is the fucking worst. He also then posts this shit right here. Yo, 50 been hating this nigga for a long time. I This is back in 2007. Chat, one thing about 50, and I always respected this about him. Because, I, you know, I don't believe in that Zodiac sign bullshit. That's bullshit. But even me, you see, y'all know me. I have a very forgiving personality. And, and I mean, obviously, sometimes I'll be really upset. But, like, time does heal. Like, after, like, a couple of years, bro, I just can't even have the same energy. Unless you really did something like, like, Ruri, I'm always hate that nigga. You get what I mean? But, like, like you see me forgive people that y'all were like, yo, why would you forgive that person? 50 holds on to every beef for life. I mean, 50 been beefing with his own flesh and blood, Marquise, for life. Like, he don't give a fuck about that nigga. You know what I mean? 50 don't give a fuck. If you beef with 50, you beef for life. This was 2007. How long ago was 2007 from now? So that was 10... That's 16 years. 16 years ago, right? And by the way, even back then, he wasn't like, it was still, he wasn't on the best of terms with Diddy now. Let's be clear. But Screamfest 07, <laughs> he posted a video. Remember they had that, um, that, that, it was the I Get Money. I think it was like the, the Bill, the, the Billy remix. So he had Diddy on it. Um, Diddy, T.I., Puffy, no, no, D Diddy is Puffy. Diddy, 50, T.I., and um, J, right? Am I wrong? I think so. Anyway, look at 50's caption. 20 machine guns only get 10 months, which, by the way, that's a clear shot to Clifford Harris, right? <laughs> and then he says, Diddy in the back, pat niggas on butts. Nah, I ain't with it. I ain't never been with it. <laughs> Bars. <laughs> Look at this video right here. <laughs> and watch 50's demeanor, man. You wanna take him back? What you gonna do? What you gonna do for him, Jay? I wanna take him back a little bit. Fuck. Well, see it, my nigga. You Put know your Rockefeller show in the fucking city, nigga. Yeah. Oh, Kanye was on stage too. Oh, shit. Take him back. Somebody said, no, this was the concert with T.I., Kanye, Diddy, and, and Jay Z. What you gonna do? What Look. 50 is just like, you can tell, this thing just looks like the epitome of that bully that walks around the fucking schoolyard 
and he's always separate from everybody else, but he just likes bullying. What you gonna Look do for him, Jay? I wanna take him back a little bit. Fuck. What's here, my nigga? You Put know your this, Rockefeller this show in the fucking city, nigga. I ain't gonna lie, the ass pat was a little wild. You wanna We're, take him back? Nigga, I know y'all at the garden, but nigga, this ain't basketball night, nigga. You ain't motherfucking Latrell Sprewell and Allen Houston back in the day, or you ain't goddamn Kevin Durant or Kyrie Irving or Luka Doncic running off the court. The fuck are you slapping Hov on the ass for right now? What you gonna do? You could tell that you could tell that 50 knew some such shit was gonna happen. He said, nah, I ain't with this shit. Nah, I ain't with this gay shit right here. What you gonna do for him, Jay? I wanna take him back a little bit. Fuck. What's here, my nigga? You Put know your Rockefeller show in the fucking city, nigga. Yeah. You wanna we take him back? It's like Jay Z even clenched one of his butt cheek after the first time he got slapped. What you gonna do? What you gonna do for him, Jay? I want to take him back a little bit. Fuck look, look at this. Look, look at Jay after the first lap. You know this, this is is like he's like, Yo, what the fuck? Fucking ah. city, nigga. Yeah. Anyway, he ain't stopped then. He posted this picture of uh, of uh, Diddy without his pants, saying, Yo, "What kind of Batsy boy party is this? Bumbo clot. Yo, what you think? I don't, I don't got to this. <laughs> anyway, he said, "Why you think I don't go to this? Okay." Yeah, he been posting about him just nonstop about the Aaron Hall shit. He said, well, there you have it, folk. The man said he liked to go behind the little man so he could knock the line out the motherfucker. Must ain't get permission this time. <laughs> like, yo, come on, man. Yo, he's clowning him in the most moment. Saying another one. <laughs> and another one. <laughs> you must be used to be spending all that cheap wine and dining. I told you. Five, four, three to one. Another one. Anyway. All right. I'm going to be honest with y'all. Uh, it's it, it's it's hilarious kind of watching this because, yo, I don't know if y'all see. You know, obviously we've seen kind of reason. This is a, the earliest thing I can see of why they don't like each other is Fifty saying that Diddy wanted to bring him shopping, and he wasn't with that gay shit. And, and to him, that was gay shit. You feel me? Like a man asking for him to take you shopping, it's like flirting with you. You know what I mean? Comfortable. Like he said, he said something to me one time, a long time ago. A at Chris Lighty's wedding, he told me to take me shopping. I looked at him like, what the, what the, what'd you just say? <laughs> Let yeah. me move, man, before I do something. You're going to make me mess up the wedding. Oh, oh that's man. a nice gesture. Let's Let me get out of No, dude, take me. That's still what a guy oh, says to a girl. Nice <laughs> what you been getting out for a decade? I asked 50 about that. And he said you did the same thing to him. You asked him to take him shopping. Yeah. I thought he needed some clothes. Guilty. Guilty as fuck. <laughs> what? I'm a nice guy. What the fuck? Yo, why, why are you in fifth? Hey, yo. Why are you uncomfortable? Like you say. Now, this wasn't the only time 50 addressed that. And you can tell this shit bothered him deeply. Pause. And by the way, you know, maybe me and, me and fifth got like a little, you know, uh, 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 synergy here because certain type of activities bothers us to the core you feel me it's like it's like y'all couldn't understand when when that little 50 spoke about being the nigga pop was like yeah like first he was amping him to, to right. get stout then he was like yo he's like yo so yo when we gonna get the chance to you know to kick it like we could just hang out nigga we gotta we gotta Hold kick that. it this is pop. okay you're telling me we gotta kick it and shit and he's like right. yo why don't we like go shopping or some shit i mean like i pay for it and i was like what the fuck this nigga just said <laughs> <laughs> I got the fuck away from him because I was like, this nigga like, fuck it. Wait, this nigga just tell me he'd take me shopping. <laughs> and this is the shit. You can tell it bothers the fuck out of 50. This is shit that goes on. But well, there's your little fruit pop. It's a fruit pop. It's a fruit pop, trust me. You see these little weird ass pictures and shit like that out there? I'm just sitting out there for no reason. Your favorite you don't see actually pictures of me like kissing it. Like that doesn't happen by accident. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm telling you. Yes, I'm telling you. Look, look. Later you gonna find out a little shit that I'll be saying. Oh, man. He right. Later you gonna find out that that little shit he was talking about be real. Now, while 50 may have turned down the advances to go shopping, I'm not sure every other rapper did. He wasn't the only rapper who got invited shopping.
the matching shirts is crazy. Hey, I don't want to jump to conclusions here, chat. But does that look like they went shopping or not? <laughs> Yo, twin, let's let's both cop this. Nah, I got it. I got it, play what? I got it for us. Come on. Let's go in the dressing room, try this shit on. Just now realizing after seeing this picture a hundred times that they're matching. I guess he accepted the shopping trip. Holy. Holy. <laughs> hey, people. Now, I'm going to be honest. Diddy's a shrewd operator. You know you finna get invited shopping. Once Diddy start calling you, Daddy. Hey, what's up, King Son? Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, Daddy. You deserve that matching outfit, Daddy. Pause. This one, did he scout him out? You putting in that work. Put in that work? How he putting that work? That nigga's just sitting there. The nigga look drunk. How he putting that work? What work he putting in? What work he putting in? <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Proud of you. I love you. Proud of him? Yeah. Hey, what's up, King Son? Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it. I ain't gonna lie to you, and I don't blame Meek for this. I think we gotta check. You might have slipped something to Meek drink. Meek look a little out of it. You know what he like? Like, you lit. You like, you trying to get back to like a little equilibrium, nigga. Diddy got his phone out. We don't, he, we know he got one hand on the phone and another hand, we don't know what he doing. But he might have thought this was the pre-freak off. You deserve it, daddy. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. I'm proud of you. I love you. What did he deserve? Yeah. Hey, what's up, King Son? Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. Well, I'll be damned. I'll be damned. Now, I got to be honest with y'all, chat. We got to get to the real shit. We're talking about the young thug case, man, after all this time. Do we feel like Thug is coming home after all the stuff that we've seen, bro? That was only, like, what, day one or day two? Do we really feel like Thug is coming home? Like, I sat there and I listened to, like, two, three hours of the trial, bro. The amount of cap I hear, like, the amount of cap I hear in that trial is just absurd. Like, the the his lawyer was saying thug stands for truly something like humble outstanding like just all this weird stuff like oh slime is it came from low when i'm surprised they didn't say slime oh he just like slime off nickelodeon like it's just so much cat bro like i don't even want to watch the trial like it just sounds so crazy like it just makes young thug look so stupid and his his lawyer called him a cap rapper like <laughs> like a studio rapper like the ones who just go in the studio and gets the cap and bro like I feel like this is bad for Thug. It's it's nothing good that comes from this situation. And he called wife and Lucy broke. He said wife and Lucy's beef win because he's broke. <laughs> like I don't see any. I don't I honestly I don't think Thug's be in this case. We could, and they didn't give him any plea deals. They just want to take him down. And it's a lot of rats in the YSO case. But fuck all the other rats. Do we feel like Gunner's gonna take the stand, bro? Do we think Gunna is going to take the stand against King Slime? I I know 100% Gunna can't take that stand. If Gunna takes that stand, his career is done. Completely done. Like, no support, anything. 
Gunner got the the perfect way for Gunner to come back. He stand on business. He stand on business, you know. Even if he got to do what a little two three years, and not take the stand and lose his plea agreement. But I mean, is it worth the two three years? I don't think it is, bro. Like I feel like jail was a good thing for Gunner though. You feel me? He came out what fifty pounds lighter. Now he be in the gym all day every day. He probably got off the drugs and all that stuff wherever else he was taking. Feel me? Which it, it's good, I guess. And man, it's just crazy how many rats they got in YSL, bro. And I know the days the YSL members take the stand and snitch on Thug, it's gonna go viral. And I will be right here to report on it because I'm gonna be sitting back laughing. Because you heard what he said. He don't fuck with rats. Thug actively knew it was rats at YSL. And he didn't do anything about it. And he didn't care. Because they, they were snitching on the ops. They don't care when they snitching on the ops. But when you snitch on the homies, it's wrong. That's why the streets is is dumb. You basically, you kill someone, you're throwing your life away. You you do any like dumb ish in almost any state, but you're throwing your life away. Streets is a myth. Streets is dumb. You could be a real nigga and stay in jail for, what, 30, 40 years, throw your life away. Or you're a snitch, you're a rat, you tell, and you get out and you live your life. Hey, it's a lose-lose situation, y'all. I mean, some people like living in there, unless you want to be like Lil' J. You just get used to it, you adapt to it, and you start, you feel me? Get it with men. Or you might be the man who just, you feel me? Yeah, Lil Nas X. But let me know what you guys feel about this whole situation, bro. Free thug, hopefully. I pray that. Everything goes well for him, but make sure you like, comment, subscribe, plug academics, and I'm out.